It only took open source a year to make a model that reaches the level of GPT 3.5. While some may say OpenAI has no modes because of this, but a year in AI time is really on a different scale than in real life. Anyways, this mode discussion all came back into the picture thanks to Mistral publishing Mistral AX7B. And right off the bat, you will notice that it has a really unique naming scheme. Instead of a whole number that would represent a model's parameter count, which is what people usually do, they are doing maths on its name. And it's because they are referring to a new architecture paradigm which they introduced for this model called Mixture of Experts, which is completely different from how most LLMs operate. While the main idea of Mixture of Experts is nothing new, it has not been a prominent method for LLMs, especially at scale. The people at Mistral were able to make this method work and perform better than Gemini Pro, Claude 2.1, and GPT 3.5. So what exactly is this Mixture of Experts approach? Well, rather than using a new Neural net that is, for example, 512 wide, why not split into eight neural networks of 64? If something like a router can pick the correct network for each inference, then we technically only have to run one eighth of the neurons on every forward pass. While the core idea is that there's eight expert models that specialize in different topics, and instead of combining results from all the models, a router decides which two expert models to trust when given a question or a prompt. And by only using two models, it reduces the computational cost costs and increases the speed of generation. This then combines the strength of multiple smaller expert models to solve a problem when the user throws at it. But how can it be so good? Well, a reason might be a lot of research has already proven that smaller models focused on a specific topic outperforms a larger model that is more generalized. So you can kind of interpret Mixtral AX7B in two ways. It is a 47B model but with 13B model speed or a 13B model that has performance of a 47B model, which makes the the router extremely important here because it has to choose the right model that would generate the best results. How does this router know which expert to choose then? Well, it learned to choose the best experts during training. This is achieved by having the router train together with all the experts, then using a softmax gating function to model a probability distribution and choose who gets what. But how does that work? And if we just train it randomly, it will most likely be one strong and seven weak models because the one that initialized first will always be the best which will lose the reasons for using MOE. So we need to make sure all of them are equally good. To overcome these obstacles, they added noise to the router and penalized the router if it did not equally distribute its choices across all experts, which incentivizes the router to develop an MOE where all the experts are used equally during training. So overall, the researchers do not get to decide which expert specialize in what, the process of gradient descent does, which still makes it kind of like a black box. But as long as it's better, it's free real estate. They said that surprisingly, we do not observe obvious patterns in the assignment of experts based on the topic. And also, this suggests that the router does exhibit some structured syntactic behavior. So the experts appear to be more aligned with the syntax and semantics rather than the knowledge domain we would have otherwise assumed. But it kind of makes sense given how the model is trained to hop from experts to experts between each token. In this example they gave, each color represents an expert model that the router assigns the token to. For the Python codes, you can see more clearly about the patterns of the assignments, while self and dev are assigned to another expert model. So by not all being the same color when all the tokens are about coding and instead have different colors across the board, it shows that the router assigns the expert models based on the syntax or semantics and not a subject domain. Some people even made phi to MOE and oh wow, these open source people do work really fast. And if you do want to run Mixtral, I have some bad news for you, while it is claimed to only use 30 13 billion parameters when running, 86 GB of VRAM is still the recommended VRAM size to run it without quantizing it. So good luck collecting those VRAMs in the wild. But there is a TensorRT LLM version of Mixtral, so use this information at your own discretion. And before we end this video, here's an early heads up for NVIDIA's GTC24, because if you attend a digital session anytime between March 18th and 21st, you may have a chance to win an RTX 4080 Super from me. 
So if you are interested in Nvidia's upcoming AI breakthroughs and announcements, or just want to win a brand new GPU, use the link down in the description to sign up right now so you don't forget. The GTC 24 AI conference this year has three different registrations ranging from in-person, virtual, and workshop. The GTC in-person conference pass has early bird pricing right now, and you can connect with some cool industrial people face-to-face -face during the GTC event. The virtual session is completely free to sign up, but it has a uh, limited space but it lets you attend some key GTC events across the web. And then there's the full day workshop where you can attend both in person or virtually and earn certificates of competence. This year's GTC conference has topics such as generative AI, computer vision, and innovative workflows. So don't miss out this chance to learn from the global experts. I am still planning how to make the giveaways, but it'll probably be along the lines of taking a photo of yourself watching the GTC virtually. So sign up now and you won't forget. Thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Maries, Miguelim, Deegan, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.